in the news now is a story that I've wanted to record some time ago. I just haven't had time on my tour. And this is the interview that Adrian Basson, the chief editor of News24, had with Becky Tsele, the Minister of Police. And there's many important things that needs to be highlighted in this interview. Firstly, the fact that the interview took place when it did, and why News24, who is our New World Order frontline media mouthpiece, would interview the Minister of Police uh, urgently, and why he would give a one-hour interview to Adrian Vasson for the country to see. Remember, News24 has around 7 million people following it, so it has a huge database of people that it can connect with. And um, I will give you the link to this interview and you can have a look at the bits and pieces in there. But I want to highlight a couple of things to you. And the headline is, as it happened, Frontline, uh, we are beginning to co-govern with gangsters, Tsele says. So this is what News24 decided to take out of the interview and actually highlight at the top. And this is quite interesting considering that it's clear that the interview was done in lieu of what happened uh, at a courthouse where there was some action and where police, uh, where a police vehicle was overturned that later caught a light. And the headline does not focus on that. It focuses on the fact that we are beginning to co-govern with gangsters. And beginning is an interesting word phrase to use because this has been happening for decades now. So Police Minister Becky Tsele in conversation with News24 Editor-in-Chief Adrian Vasson on farm murders. This is now what they're saying this is about crime and police killings. And they say follow it live here. Now obviously the interview has already taken place and you can follow the link and actually go through the interview. And I'm going to basically go down to the bottom and work my way up quickly. There's not too much to cover. The interview was about an hour long, but I highlighted a few things from the interview. But isn't it interesting that, uh, that the headline is not on anything that they spoke of here. Murders, crime and police killings. Okay. So the summary of this interview, I'll just quickly go through. The Frontline Interview Summary, summary News24 Editor-in-Chief Adrian Basson, Press Police Minister Becky Tsele on farm killings, crime and corruption in a fast-paced hour-long interview. Tsele insisted that farm attacks were prioritized under the fear crimes category by the police and he was engaging rural communities to resolve the root causes of crime there. In particular, Tsele highlighted that there is tension over evictions, stock and relationships between farmers and workers that also played a role in crime in rural areas. Sele promised to investigate the allocation of resources and said that farmers had volunteered vehicles and drones to assist the police. On the killing of Charles Kinnear, Sele said that the Western Cape was problematic because of the influence of gangsters and went as far as to suggest that the judicial system was infiltrated by those in alignment with various gang factions. Now, this is the police minister saying that the judicial system, not necessarily the judiciary itself, is infiltrated by influences from the gang controlled system. So, it said, it said you suggest that the judicial system was infiltrated by those in alignment with various gang factions. He said that he would wait for a detailed report into why Kenya had no police protection as was the case in other hotspot crime areas like KwaZulu Natal, where I find myself currently. Sele said there was progress to battle corruption and the Hawks, NPA and other agencies were working together to fight the issue. Now this is all politics speak, <coughs> it's empty words, it means absolutely nothing. He conceded that the key police crime intelligence was not yet operating at 100%. Now, how will you know if it's operating at 100%? But said that progress was being made. Now, I don't know what this means, but I'll quickly brush through the interview. But I just want to read you the last comment uh, of this interview. So, the last part of the interview, where Becky Tseli said, 
crime intelligence is not where it should be, but much better, says Sele. So he's saying that crime intelligence is better, but not where it should be. I don't know what that means. I don't know if that is supposed to just install um, calming people, but it's very much a nothing statement. It's a political statement made by the Minister of Police. And I'm not saying that he's wrong for doing that, but if he really knew what was going on on the ground, which he clearly does not, I don't think there's any minister that's in touch with what's happening on the ground, he would be able to give a more concrete statement. <clears throat> but then he follows on and he actually says a few things that gives you more detail on this. And I've discussed this in some of my meetings and some of you will know exactly what I'm speaking about. If I've met with you and we've met with over 1,900 people now and we'll be getting to 2,000 people before we leave KwaZulu Natal. Cash heist enforcement should be intelligence driven operations. This is what he says. Now, this is a no brainer. Uh, most operations like that should be intelligence driven. He says COVID budgets are invisible even to the Minister of Police. Now, I've mentioned before that the operations that are constructed to infiltrate things like cash in trans and ice to infiltrate terrorist cells and so on that not even the minister of police or anyone in government actually knows what's going on there and this is very important that those intelligence units should service the people of the country and not the the ruling party or any other politicians and he says well i'll read again COVID budgets are invisible even to the minister of police and then he says we need complete integrity there says Sele. i don't think he likes the fact that he can't see how much money is being spent to investigate him and his other cronies many of the other cronies in the ministry as well as the other agencies even the courts because these operations can investigate them those budgets are covert so that he cannot put his finger on it so that he cannot track and trace who's behind it and he would love to have that kind of control and he should never have that control. It's important that we have intelligence agencies that can investigate the Minister of Police and that he has absolutely no insight as to what happens there. The moment that falls away, our country will go down the toilet faster than you can ever imagine. But to get to the rest of the interview, and this is where it gets interesting. And I'll go down to the bottom and work my way up. Sele says he never told farming communities that they should not complain when they get hurt. He says he was speaking in Parliament and couldn't lie. He says the journalist was interpreting what he said in Isi Zulu. So he spoke in Zulu. And we know famously that people went off kilt because they said that Becky Sele uh, told them they shouldn't complain. Farm dwellers raised the issue that they were restricted from increasing their cattle stock, says Sele. So he's saying that a lot of the people dwelling on farms wanted to increase the cattle stock and the farmers weren't allowing them to do that. Sele says, nothing justifies a farm attack. Human beings have better brains to sit down rather than attack, says Sele. So what he's saying is that our mind should tell us not to attack somebody, but that we should rather just sit down. The land issue is causing a lot of tension. So he's using land not being available as a reason of tension between uh, people and the farmers. Sele highlights a disrespectful statement at a meeting. That school principal and schoolboy relationship, I did not like it. So he said that people spoke to him as if he was a schoolboy and they are the school principal. And then he said, I did not choose sides, says Sele, of the meeting with farmers and community. Black community told Sele that he came running because a white man was killed. Broadly, people will find that I was there and we spoke. Now, I hate the fact that politicians like this use this color. Um, it just causes division and it shouldn't be used at all. Sele says journalists who wrote lies about him can help the relationship with himself and farming communities. Says he will talk to other MPs, specifically Dr. Peter Grunewald. So he maybe felt that Dr. Peter Grunewald uh, was stoking the visions with comments that he made. Maybe he should speak to 
a couple of other MPs too, maybe in the EFF and his own party. Basson says that farm attacks are usually about money or greed rather than racism. Sele says an update on understanding farm attacks is required. Now how can Basson make this statement? Has he been to the farms? Has, has he done thorough research? So Basson says that farm attacks are usually about money or greed rather than racism. This is quite interesting people. That he is an expert on farms. I wonder if a book is going to come out soon on farm murders and Basson will be the expert on this. He acknowledges that relationships are bad and former workers were arrested for the murder. So Becky Celi is saying that in some cases that workers are killing the farmers and that there were bad relationships between the farmers and the workers. In some cases revenge is a motive for farm attacks, says Celi. He says in some cases. Celi says the one visit to Normandine cannot be a once off. Warns people not to dismiss the issue of racial tension on farms. Once again, driving the race narrative that this is race, racial tension on farms. Farm killing is already a category in the priority section of crime, says Sele, by way of explaining why he chooses not to specifically highlight it as a priority crime. He says it's already a priority crime. It's not true that nothing has been done to work on the safety of farmers, says Sele. Says it's been taken seriously. Not taking something seriously doesn't mean that you're doing anything. But... I believe that if you want to be safe on a farm, you cannot trust government to keep you safe. I mean, anyone thinking that government's going to keep you safe is absolutely insane. Do not understand the bigger picture. Do not understand the globalist agenda here. And don't realize that there is a specific agenda with farmers being attacked in terrorist style. <laughs> then he says, fear crimes are prioritized. Says Sele, insists that farm attacks are part of that category. So they do call it fear crimes. Think about that. Crimes that instill fear. Incapacity of the station in Normandy was raised and police will investigate the capacity. Farmers have volunteered their vehicles and drones to help the police monitor crimes, says Sele. Highlights better allocation of resources for, for police in the rural areas. Now I want to tell the farmers that you should not rely on police or the government to protect yourselves. If you are taking this seriously, what you will do is take that protection into your own hands. You are on your own. Gather together in your communities. Make sure that people that go out on farm roads, people that go out on back roads, that you ask them where they're going, what they are doing there. And come together and come up with your own strategic plan for protecting your area. I would encourage people in informal settlements to do the same. In middle class neighborhoods to do the same. Even in more affluent areas to do the same. Go in your communities, gather together and start communicating with each other. Get to know your neighbors. And people communicate. This is how you can stop things. Don't trust the government. You need to become as independent of government and large corporations as you can. Anyone that's working with government, when government is working with the United Nations, and the United Nations are just implementation tools of people that have a much more sinister agenda, that want this country to fail, it's not going to work for you. You have to take these measures yourself. Let me carry on. Sele highlights land reform as a central pillar to reduce tension in rural areas. Evictions are a source of tension in rural areas. Burials also play a role in tensions when workers get evicted. So this I can understand. This is when different cultures clash and people don't want to speak to each other. And the farmers need to take cognizance of this. That if people want to bury people somewhere, that is a culture trying to express itself. And if cultures don't understand each other and don't want to help the other person to do something, it solicits emotions that can become violent. Basson presses Sele on raising the issue of land reform with President Sil Ramaphosa. Now, I don't even know what the hell that is supposed to mean. What does it mean to say land reform? It's such a catchphrase. It means absolutely nothing. All South Africans, people born here, should have access to land. That is not the case. 
because the Rothschild controlled financial system will not allow it and our government bows down to it. Sele says he would encourage young people to enter the farming industry. We need to open for young blood and new blood to work there. That's such a nothing statement to make. It's an absolute nothing statement. It means nothing. Why would someone go and work on a farm, a young person, when this is what the media is putting out there? There's thousands of farmers out there that aren't being killed. But when you're putting this out in the media continuously and the farming communities are not standing together to protect each other, then you create a situation where no young person will want to go and farm. Sele says arrested farmers are appearing on Friday. Now this is the problem. Okay. It's Tuesday today on Friday. Arrested farmers will appear in court. Says it's a concern when politicians add fuel to the fire, including yourself, as he speaks about the trial of the Senecal suspects. Expresses disappointment that farming organizations have not called for de-escalation of tensions. That is a very good question, uh, Minister Begicele. Why do people not want to escalate tensions? You need to ask yourself that question. Because just remember, a couple of people, Senecal is just one town. A couple of people can cause an entire country to be influenced. There are millions of people in this country. You cannot have 10, 20 or 100 people destabilize a country. And it shouldn't be allowed. And people will take action to stop it. Sele says he will see the family of Brendan Horner laments his killing. And he says there is some sickness that is going out there, says Sele, about the method of murder. Well, if you look at the method of many of these farm murders, they are not just workers upset with a farmer. They are very well planned terrorist attacks to shock a nation. It's meant to shock and put fear into people. It's nothing else. And then he says the killing of Charles Kinnear and senior detectives doesn't mean the battle against crime has been lost, says Sele. He says it's not easy, I must admit, says Sele. Once again, a nothing statement. Sele says he's waiting for a full report on the Kinnear protection. And he says gang violence is a big problem in the Western Cape. It's a question of communities unshackling themselves from the claws of the gangsters. Points to prosecutions and judiciary to put criminals behind bars. Now he's right about one thing. It is a community that is to blame for the existence of gangsters. It's your children running around with guns, people. You raise them like that. Sort it out. I fully agree. Sally says there is a systematic gang alignment in the Western Cape. Threatens that perhaps importing officers from other provinces might be a solution. Now that is something typically that you can do. When the police officers in Cape Town are working with the gangs, that is a good thing to do. But getting counter-terrorism or crime intelligence involved might help as well, as long as they're not tainted. It looks like there's a growing relationship of gangsterism between the Western Cape and Gauteng, says Sele. Now think about this. We are beginning to co-govern with gangsters. It cannot be allowed and there must be pushback. What does that mean? What does pushback mean? It's nothing words. Because a minister hasn't got a proper plan. He's not qualified to actually be in that position. Some people might like him. Some people might hate him. But he's not qualified to be the minister of police. Not even slightly. The Hawks were badly damaged, says Sele, about corruption. There are nine agencies that are working together and I think we are going to get good results. Once again, a nothing political statement. Absolute waste of breath. Law enforcement agencies must be given the space to do their work, says Sele. Law enforcement agencies must be given the space to do their work. Well, they are not. They are not doing good work. So what the citizens need to do is make sure that they prevent crime by being prepared, being self-reliant, being resilient. That takes training, cooperation and communication. And what you need to do and what we're trying to do with this tour around the country is to get people that are willing to work together to actually form these groups within the community so that they can stand together and so that they can sort out crime themselves. 
and then the judiciary will hopefully be able to take care of that part of the system. But to prevent crime is much better than have to, having to deal with it afterwards. Prevention is the way to go. It's the only way to stop farm terrorist attacks. You prevent it from happening. If you see someone walking somewhere, you interrogate them. You find out why they are there and you do it. You can do it in a decent way. And if that person does not belong there or they can't explain where they're going, then you need to get the law enforcement agencies involved. People need to be able to make citizens arrest. There's many things that can be done. And then lastly, again, I'm back to where I was, where Becky Taylor says that COVID budgets are invisible to him, even to the Minister of Police. And this is a good thing. He doesn't like the fact that he cannot see where the COVID money is spent because those projects can even investigate him and maybe it should investigate him. Maybe there are already projects running now, uh, operations that are investigating him. And he very specifically said we need complete integrity there. So he's asking for integrity in these intelligence driven operations, especially with cash in transit heights, heists. I will keep you updated as to developments in this space. The fact that Becky Tseli would actually offer an interview with Adrian Masson, the fact that it was broadcast on News24, this is significant. This means that there is a shift happening and I will in my next video explain more about the shift in the political landscape and every South African should be aware of this. And if this doesn't drive you to start getting to know your neighbors, the people that stand with you, the people that think the same as you, then nothing will. Thank you very much till the next video.